Oh, hello there. I didn't see you walk in. Well, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're going to learn something that is very simple but very important today. Uh, it's a lot like your first day of kindergarten, where you showed up in kindergarten math class and you learned uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, or 2 plus 2 is 4, uh, and it wasn't the sexiest thing, but it was the basis of pretty much everything else you ever learned. Uh, so today we're going to learn what is the equivalent in Java, which is printing a single line of text to the screen. Uh, it's sort of a toy example, but it's kind of a tradition uh, when you're learning a new programming language to start with what we call the hello world. We can sort of place any language along this spectrum of what's good for machines and what's good for humans. Humans are really good at interpreting what we call natural language. Natural language is really, really complicated. I mean, you can see these examples. Kids make nutritious snacks. Well, you could read that in a couple different ways. Uh, that's actually very difficult for computers to parse and properly understand. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the way computers basically understand the universe, which is as uh, ones and zeros. And that, that's a reality informed by uh, the actual mechanics of computers. Um, and in between, there's a whole spectrum of different possible types of languages. Uh, and they, they sort of vary along this, uh, this spectrum of, of what is good for machines and what is good for humans to understand. Closer to machines, we have machine languages, and, you know, that's something like Java bytecode or, or anything that you can run on your computer. And if you look at that code, it's pretty difficult to understand. It's a little bit better than zeros and ones, but it's not really that helpful to us. Above that, you have some lower level languages. And what we mean when we say lower level is languages that allow you more control over the specific resources of your machine. So assembly language or C, right? These are, these are low level languages and things can get a little hairy when you're working in a language like that. But if you're doing hardware programming or, or uh, anything like that, you, uh, you sometimes want that degree of control. We're going to learn a high level language, uh, specifically Java, but maybe you've already played around with Python or with C++. High level languages take care of a lot of the nitty gritty logistical stuff that low level languages don't take care of. Uh, so it lets us focus a little bit more on the conceptual work and the design and all of that. So that's what we're going to work on in this class. Now, when we're working with Java, you're going to write human readable code. But in order for that code to actually be run, we have to do what we call compiling it. We have to compile it into Java bytecode. Java bytecode can be transferred to any system, any platform, and it can be read by the Java virtual machine, which will then run it and give you your output. This has a bunch of a uh, bunch of advantages, right? I mean, it means that if I'm writing code on a Windows machine, uh, because it doesn't depend on the Windows machine, because I'm going to compile it into Java bytecode and run it on the Java virtual machine, well, that means that my Java code is going to run most likely properly on your Mac machine or on somebody else's Linux machine. So the two steps here are we're going to write code that we can understand. Then we're going to compile it into code that Java really prefers. And then the Java virtual machine will run that code and give us our output. So those two steps, compiling and running, uh, you know, those are bookended by some other, other, other steps in the creative process. The first is actually in your brain. That's where you're thinking about a solution. So in this case, uh, we want to figure out uh, whether a, a child at an amusement park is four feet tall, right? You must be four feet tall to ride the ride. If you want to take that to what we call pseudocode, which is a sort of a, a way for us to organize our thoughts, it's still written in English, but it's structured and formatted in a way that's a little bit more similar to the way a computer might think. Uh, you know, in this case, we're going to say, if the kid is taller than four, we want to display that, you know, he's too short. Otherwise, that means if he's not taller than four, we want to display, enjoy the ride. Well, once we have that pseudocode written on pen and paper, then we actually want to go ahead and, and type that in actual proper syntax in, uh, in, a, in an editor. For this, you might use Eclipse or BlueJ or something else. And this is the point where things have to get precise because your Java compiler has a very low fault tolerance. After that, we compile it just like we were talking about before. Uh, it's sort of like translating it into Java bytecode into the, the form that the Java virtual machine likes. And we take that bytecode and we run it on the JVM and then we get our output. So this is how a solution gets from your brain to the screen. So, like I said, our first program in the great tradition of all languages, basically, is going to be us printing the phrase, hello world, 
to the screen. Code's on the next slide. Best way to do this, the best way for you to really understand this and start to memorize it and internalize it is uh, to, to type it out yourself in a new Eclipse project or a, uh, a new file in Binks. Uh, and I'll have a, a separate video that'll show how exactly to do that. There's also directions on the class website. Uh, so here's the code. It's pretty short. It's gonna do what we need it to get done. First line here, this is just a comment, right? Those two slashes in front mean, uh, hey, compiler, ignore this. This is just for humans. This is not for you, silly machine. The comment is for others so that people can read your code and get little notes about how it works. But really, it's also for your future self. You're probably not going to forget how Hello World runs, but if you have a, a chunk of code that you're coming back to after months or years, you're going to be really glad that your past self thought to write a comment. Uh, and every good engineer I've ever known comments compulsively. Uh, that, that it makes you more popular with your coworkers, more popular with the opposite sex. Um, it's, it's just a good life strategy in general. This program, it really, it only has one class. That class is called Hello World. Um, there's a single method in this class called main, a method. So methods are basically chunks of code and uh, they do stuff. We'll learn a lot more about these and we're gonna spend a lot of time, but for now, just remember, um, you know, a method is pretty analogous to the mathematical idea of a function, right? It's, it's like a magic box, you put something in, it does stuff and you get something out maybe. Um, in Java, we write method names with parentheses after them. Uh, the parentheses are where we put the inputs that we're gonna give to the method. So the name of this program is Hello World. It's actually the name of a class, right? You can see it says public class Hello World. But for now, before we've really talked about classes and object-oriented design, you can think of this as the name of the program. Uh, this first line here that's indented a little bit, right? That's indented a little bit. This, this is the, the specification for a method. So this is telling us a bunch of stuff about the method, public static void. These are special keywords. We call them reserved words. Don't worry about them right now. We're going to talk about them later. These are our uh, keywords that tell us stuff about the method. Then it tells us the name of the method, and then it tells us what's going in the method. Okay. Main is a really special method. Main is like uh, the, the method that tells the program, hey, start here. So your program's only going to have one main. Um, now, like I said, those other words, public class, public static void, you're going to know what all those mean soon enough. But for now, I just want you to trust me. Just ignore those for a little bit, right? Just include them in your program. We're going we're gonna to get to them later. But for right now, I don't want to get bogged down too much. This is the main line of action in the program. This is where we're actually doing our work. So you can see we, we had a class. Inside the class, there's a method, this method called main. And then the, the method also has curly braces, right? Open and close. And inside that method, we have a series of statements that do stuff. In this program, there's actually only one statement. It's this statement, system.out.print, print line, hello world. Okay, statements end with semicolons. That's really important because uh, in the same way that when you're writing an essay, if you're writing a sentence, you gotta end with a period. You have to end a statement with a semicolon. Otherwise, the compiler doesn't know that you're done. Compilers are a lot worse at understanding, oh, he meant to put a period there. Uh, than a human is. So be careful with that. I guarantee that at some point soon you will experience the utter wrath of forgetting a semicolon. So for now, you know, you can think of programming as basically just saying, hey, this is what the class is going to be called. This is what main in that program is going to do. So a couple common questions. Do I really need to type in hello world from scratch or can I just look at your code and sort of trust that it works? Uh, yeah, uh, you're going to want to type it in. Uh, that's partially because you want to start building the muscle memory of, of uh, you know, typing out the programs and, and starting to actually code. So uh, I would recommend heartily that you actually type in the code for Hello World rather than just copying and pasting it, rather than just looking what, looking at the slides or watching the video and trusting that it works. Um, another question, how, how does Java handle when I add spaces or tabs or new lines or anything else into the code? Uh, the answer is uh, nothing really changes. Right? Java is mostly white space insensitive. Uh, so this code chunk here at the bottom under number two, this is going to work too. Now, the problem is that code looks like garbage, right? Uh, you can see three different code examples. These are all the same specific statements. They'll all compile properly. They'll all run properly. But the first two make you look like a fool. So it's just hard to understand 
makes people question your intelligence and sanity. So uh, it's really, really important that your code be clean and readable. Maybe we want to add a new line, right? Maybe we want to uh, print a second line of code. It's really easy to do this in Java. We used print line, that's uh, system.out.println, and that adds a new line afterwards. So the next thing you print is going to be on the next line. If you didn't want to add a new line, if you wanted the next thing you print to be on the same line, you just do system.out.print. Okay, so uh, here are two examples, right? Uh, print line, why am I so print itchy? Well, that print line is going to add a new line. We end up with why am I so itchy? Two separate lines. Uh, likewise, if we say system.out.print, why am I so system.out.print itchy? Well, there's no print line, so we end up with everything on the same line. The answer is I don't know why you are so itchy. Why is that hello world in quotation marks? You may have worked with this in other languages, but uh, it means it's a string. It's a literal value. Uh, it means that we're saying to, to the compiler, hey, this is, a, this is not a command for you. This is not a variable. This is actual, actually just text, like hello, comma, space, world, exclamation point. Really, really important to close it off with quotes. Um, don't forget those. Otherwise, you will get a nasty error, and you're going to spend a while trying to figure out why it happened. Problem is, what if you want to print a quotation mark? Because strings start and end with quotation marks, so that gets a little complicated. Um, this first line of code, system.out.println, you smell like cats, Malik said, this is going to cause you problems because the compiler is going to read that first quote and the second quote and think that you just have an empty string there. Then it's going to go to you smell like cats and it's going to wonder, okay, that's not in a string, those aren't valid Java reserved words, there's nothing, I don't understand what's happening. And then it's going to yell at you. So what we have to do is escape a quotation mark with a backslash. Okay, that, 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 tells, that tells the compiler, hey, what comes right after this backslash, that's not a quotation mark that ends a string. That's actually just a character that's supposed to be in a string. It's not going to print the backslash, just going to print the character. So you can see here, system.out.print, smell like cats, Malik said, we escape those two quotation marks, and then when we actually look at what gets printed, we end up with, with uh, some good stuff. Question is, what else can you escape? Well, you can escape N, that means uh, it's going to give us a new line, and you can escape T, it's going to give us a tab. So let's look at the example, look, we get high, then... We insert a new line. Notice we didn't use the, the new line print here. Uh, hi, on a new line, my name, and then we get a tab, Carlos Danger. What exactly is system.out.print? Like what, what is it really? You'll just think of it as a print statement for now. But uh, if you think back to the object simulation we did earlier this week, really system.out is an object and print is a command that we can give it. So we're saying to system.out, hey, uh, you know, go, out, go ahead and, and, and just please print whatever I stick in these parentheses. A couple different errors you can you can get, right? There's a, sort of at every step of the way, you can find a mistake. Um, first is when you're trying to compile it. That just means that whatever you said, whatever code you wrote, didn't make sense to the compiler. The compiler is just yelling at you because, like, you are not speaking its language properly. You're making all kinds of mistakes. Uh, so here's an example. System.out.println. Hi. Oh, no. If you have runtime errors, that's another kind of error. That means the code you wrote... Like the compiler could read it and understand it and translate it properly into bytecode. So that's fine. Your code compiled properly. But when you ran it, the Java virtual machine ended up trying to do something invalid. Good example of this is dividing by zero. So if you have a, uh, some division and, you know, because of the values in your program, you have to divide by zero. Well, you, maybe your code compiled. Maybe it made sense in general, but because you're because now you're forcing the Java virtual machine to try to divide by zero, it's going to yell at you and throw you a runtime error. So that, that, that's an, an error that happens at the second step. First step was compiling, second step was running. Third step is a logical error. So this, this means your code compiled properly, it ran properly, but you're just wrong. Like you thought about the problem incorrectly and you're getting output that is commensurately incorrect. So some examples, um, system.ouch.println, hello. We get an error, it's a, it's a compile time error and we, actually it's a syntax error. Um, and here, here's another example of, of a syntax error we could get of a compile time error. Uh, if we just drop a semicolon, right? That's gonna that's gonna screw up the uh, the compiler because it doesn't know that your line ended. Another another way to screw things up at compile time is to leave off a quotation mark in a string. So you opened a string but you never closed it. So as far as Java is concerned, it still thinks that this parentheses and this semicolon are part of that string. 
This code is going to compile properly, but when you actually run it, it's going to yell at you because you're trying to do eight divided by zero. And, you know, for now, just ignore the ints and the variables and all the syntax you, you don't know. Just trust x is eight, y is zero. We've got a, an int, a, va a variable called x that has the value of four, and we've got a variable called y that has the value of five. Um, we're gonna we're gonna crunch them into a variable called sum, which you notice we've done horribly incorrectly. X minus y. That's that's not only not sum. That's the opposite of sum. That's the difference. Okay, so bad news bears there. Uh, and then we're we're gonna print. Okay, system dot print x. So we're gonna print four there, plus a string with the plus sign, plus y, which is gonna be five, and the equal sign, and then sum. So we're saying x plus y equals sum. This is going to print out 4 plus 5 equals negative 1. Okay, so that's pretty bush leak. So that, uh, that, that we call a logic error because your code compiled, it ran properly, you just screwed up. This code is going to be uh, posted online. Uh, this is a, a little bit more complicated uh, as a version of Hello World. Um, so a couple things before you close up shop. Uh, you want to make sure that you can rewrite Hello World, you know, in an editor like Eclipse or on Binks, in Pyco, and also by hand. Uh, the goal here is not really to memorize programs, but this program is so simple that you just, you do sort of need to know how to do it. That includes being really careful and precise about syntax, about capitalization, all that kind of stuff. So I would, I would if I were you, take a couple minutes and write it out once or twice. Second thing is uh, you want to make sure that uh, you can describe how a program goes from your brain to uh, Java code, which we then compile into byte code and then gets run by the JVM. Um, if you can describe that whole process flow of what happens to Java code, you're going to be in good shape. Last thing is you want to know what those three types of errors are. Compile time, runtime, logical errors. Compile time is where your code didn't make sense to, uh, to the compiler and Java yelled at you. Runtime is where your code asked the compiler uh, ask the, the JVM to do something that it just is wrong. And log logical errors are when you made a mistake, even though your code ran. Um, you want to be able to pick out some common compile time errors. That's it for right now. Take a look back at these slides and uh, shoot me an email if you have questions. And we'll see you next class.